Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it's another Game Plan Friday, and I'm getting you ready for the Titans' Week 5 matchup on the road against the Washington Commanders. First, my keys to victory on both offense and defense. I'll tell you why I expect a huge game out of Derrick Henry and why the Titans' defensive line has the ability to dominate this game from start to finish. Then, we'll look at some individual matchups on both sides of the ball, and I'll tell you why we need to focus on Christian Fulton against Terry McLaurin. So all of that and more on a Game Plan Friday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it! You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a game plan Friday edition of the Locked on Titans podcast going over my keys to victory on both sides of the ball, the individual matchups to watch on both sides of the ball. Before we dive into it, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online where the game starts. Also, want to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen or you just haven't subscribed yet, make sure you stay locked in to the Locked on Titans podcast for Monday through Friday, free Tennessee Titans content on all platforms all year round. That includes the Locked on Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Smash the notification bell so you know when all the content goes live. And throw a thumbs up on the video right now if you think the Titans are going to defeat the Washington Commanders on Sunday. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, nearly 25 years as a Tennessee Titans fanatic and a certified film junkie breaking down the X's and O's with you every single week. I'm going to be live directly after the game on YouTube on Sunday, breaking down exactly what I saw in my 10-minute postcast, and then I'll have a full 30-minute recap up on Sunday night for you guys as well. Tuesday, we'll be breaking down the game by the numbers. Wednesday is always Rewatch Wednesday, where we dive into the tape and talk about what the Titans did schematically. Thursday will be a crossover Thursday, where we go behind enemy lines. And then next Friday, we'll be right back here for another game plan Friday. Well, there's a buy coming up, but you guys know what I mean. But either way, if any of you guys are new, wanted to break it down for you, make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Titans podcast. That's the moral of the story. But let's dive in to my keys to victory on both offense and and defense. Number one, we're going to start on the offense or on the defensive side of the ball because that's where I think the biggest key to victory is. It's something I've been mentioning throughout the week, but through my studies, I've realized, and it really doesn't take a lot of studying to realize, if I'm blatantly honest, the Washington Commanders have one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. As a matter of fact, they've allowed 17 sacks on the season. That is the worst in the league. So the Titans have to take advantage. The Titans pride themselves on defensive line play. They're going to need to add on to that sack total. And if the Titans' defensive line can dominate their matchup against the offensive line, not allow the commanders to run the football, not allow Carson Wentz to have time in the pocket, what is Carson Wentz going to do? He's going to give away the football. We know that to be the case. So if the Titans' defensive line can win their battle against the offensive line, it limits what the commander's skill position players can do against a banged-up Titans secondary, and it creates more opportunities for Carson Wentz to do what he does best and make a monster mistake and give the football to the Titans. That will help out the offense without Traylon Burks. There's less explosive potential, so I think the Titans' offense will need the help, but that's the key for me, is the Titans' defensive line has to pressure Carson Wentz, take advantage of that banged-up offensive line, create turnovers. The Commanders have the second-most interception, tied for second-most interceptions in the NFL with five. The Titans got to get a couple of those, and the Titans can jump on the Commanders early. So the Commanders are like the opposite of the Titans right now. They've been pitiful in the first half, and they've been pretty good in the second half. The Commanders are being outscored 59-7. to in the first half this year. They've given up 11 sacks of the 17 in the first half. They're averaging less than four yards per pass attempt 
in the first half. The Titans' defensive line has to jump on the commanders early, make Carson Wentz make mistakes, give easy opportunities to the offense. Also, the commanders have a ton of motion in their offense, a ton of pre-snap motion. They move Curtis Samuel all over the formation. The Titans have played a lot more zone recently than they typically would have played last year. They're at about 30% man coverage, so 70% of the time they're playing zone coverage. And I think that'll be smart against the commanders because what you don't want is you don't want man coverage where you have to run all over the formation or communicate and pass off assignments. That's much more difficult when you're in man coverage. So play zone coverage. It'll make the communication aspect much easier. And with that offensive line, the commanders are going to have to throw short passes The Titans have to tackle. They're not going to have time to throw deep passes if the Titans' defensive line comes to play. That means they're going to try to dump the ball short short to Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, to uh, Antonio Gibson, maybe even Brian Robinson in this game. Don't expect Jahan Dotson to play. So the Titans have to tackle on defense. So get pressure on Wentz, force those mistakes, and when he does get the ball out and doesn't get sacked, make sure that you tackle and limit explosive plays. Don't give the commanders any help for an offense that's struggling to score mightily on the offensive side of the ball. I think this is a huge game for Derrick Henry. I would not be surprised if Derrick Henry had 200 rushing yards in this game. The commanders do have a pretty good front. I'm not going to lie. They have Deron Payne. They have Jonathan Allen. They have Jamin Davis. Uh, Cole Holcomb's been a pretty solid player for them at linebacker as well. So it's not like the, the front seven and the defensive line of the commanders is not very good. I just think this is a team on the brink. And I think if the Titans pummel them early, get those turnovers, get some points on the board, they are going to be able to run the ball down the commander's throat. I don't think the commander's secondary, especially their veterans, their young guys have been pretty solid, but their veterans do not want to tackle Derrick Henry all day. Kyle Fuller and William Jackson. I just don't believe that. So, also, you have to take into account no Chase Young, so that means that the other guy on the other edge opposite of Montez Sweat is going to be, uh, what, James uh, Smith-Williams, uh, F.A. Abada. Uh, I think the Titans can really take advantage with some runs to the perimeter if they hulk up on tight ends, and that makes sense with the Titans missing Traylon Burks, go with a heavy tight end game plan and attack those edges and those linebackers and those safeties from the Washington Commanders. A huge day for Derrick Henry, I think, could be on the horizon. And also, with that in mind, the Titans are going to have to take some deep shots to open things up. Yes, there's no Traylon Burks. And with that in mind, you know that the Commanders who play a ton of zone, they play a ton of zone, like 10% more zone than the Titans play, one of the more zone-heavy teams. The Commanders... They're going to creep in on those zones. They're going to scoot up. They're going to come forward because the Titans don't have a lot of explosive options on paper. Send Josh Gordon deep early. Send Nick Westbrook-Akina deep early. The Titans have to take a few deep shots, even if they don't hit, just to make sure that that defense doesn't creep up too much on the intermediate route. So make them respect the deep shots. Take a couple early. Throw one to NWI. See if he can go up and get it. Throw one to Josh Gordon just to make them respect it and let them know, yeah, We'll take deep shots if you give them to us. So I would do a couple of those early on just to stretch out the defense a little bit and make sure they don't sink up too much. But those are my big game plan points on offense and defense. We're going to move into the individual matchups that I will be watching. We're going to dive into the defense first because I think that's where the Titans really have some matchups that will be important. We'll get to the offense at the end of the show, and I'll also firm up my game and score prediction. Before we get into the player matchups to watch here. Do want to tell you guys about our friends over at Simply Safe. All right, here's a sports analogy for you. When it comes to burglars, your home is like the end zone and you need the absolute strongest defense you can muster. That's why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. They have cutting edge technology. They're powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who will always have your back. So you always know your home is safe. As a lot of you guys who have been listening to the show know, I recently purchased a home. And while I'm very happy with the neighborhood, the downside of that is it's a neighborhood that might be attractive to burglars to go ahead and take that risk. Well, that's why I love Simply Safe's advanced technology. 
They have an app that you can put right on your phone. You can constantly monitor and crystal clear HD live streams from your security cameras. They have high-tech sensors. I, I just think they have all the technology that I would want for my security company and the app allowing me to monitor everything. Maybe even it's not, you know, a security situation, but I want to check out what my pets are doing while I'm not at home and things like that. I mean, it's just an incredibly convenient, secure service that they're providing at Simply Safe. So customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit Simply Safe and that's simply with an I, simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. To learn more, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Titans fans, let's continue this game plan Friday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Just gave you guys my keys to victory. On both sides of the ball, pressure on Carson Wentz, communication and tackling in the secondary. A big Derrick Henry game is needed with multiple tight ends running the ball to the edges and take some deep shots early to soften up that defense and make sure they don't get too aggressive coming downhill. Let's get into the individual matchups before we do. want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Again, I will be going live directly after the game finishes on YouTube to break down everything that we saw with my initial take, my initial reaction. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Moving into these individual matchups, I want to start on the defensive side of the ball. And I'm going back to it. I'm double dipping here with you guys because I think it's that important. It's the Titans defensive line against the commander's offensive line. So I don't think that Bud Dupree will play in this game. I don't think Ola Daney will play in this game. They were both do not practice guys for the first two days of practice during the week. With that in mind, it's going to be more than Nico Autry, Mario Edwards, Rashad Weaver, maybe even a little bit of Wyatt Ray if he gets the call up. He was back on the Titans practice squad after getting released off the roster. Um, I think with that in mind, also some Demarcus Walker out there as well. But even without Bud Dupree, I believe that this Titans defensive line with Simmons and Autry and Weaver even some Tart, and then the other guys that I mentioned. I think this Titans defensive line can still dominate a banged-up Washington Commanders offensive line. So starting right tackle for the Commanders, Sam Cosme, guy out of Texas, did not practice both days in a row on Wednesday and Thursday. So he may not play. Not only that, but their starting left tackle, Charles Leno, has been a little bit banged up. So there is a chance, there is a chance that the Commanders will have two backup offensive tackles. Last week, they had some injuries on the interior, and Sadiq Charles, who's one of their backup tackles, ended up playing some guard. So the Commanders, as David Harrison explained to us, are already on their third center, their backup's backup in Nick Martin. This is a banged-up offensive line. They've been maybe the worst offensive line in the NFL so far this year. And even without Bud Dupree and Ola Daney, and of course Harold Landry, who we know, I still think that Autry, Simmons, and Weaver, together with whether that fourth guy be Tart or Walker or Edwards, I think the Titans could still dominate that matchup. Now, Andrew Norwell at left guard, he's a good player. Funny story, Andrew Norwell played against my high school team his senior year. Saw him live in person. Absolutely insane. He's a monster. No wonder he's a good player. But Norwell is good. Okay? And Leno, in fairness, is pretty good. Cosme has been okay when he's played. But the totality of the injuries and some of the other spots, like Nick Martin at center, the Titans have to win that battle. I got to tell you guys, I've said it all week. If the Titans don't win that battle, if the offensive line of the Commanders plays better than the Titans' defensive line, Titans might lose by 10. Because where are the Titans vulnerable on defense? In the secondary. 
over the middle with the linebackers. They're banged up. Amani Hooker went from limited on Wednesday to DMP on Thursday. Not a good sign. So you're probably going to be without Amani Hooker again. That means Joshua Kalu, Andrew Adams. Yeah, Ugo Amadi will be in there as the slot cornerback. That'll help. You can have Roger McCreary at cornerback with Christian Fulton and then Ugo Amadi on the inside. A little bit of physicality, but Amadi isn't a pass coverage guy. He's that early down physical nickel like Molden was last year. So that means you're going to have Joe Schobert, Dylan Cole, David Long. That means you're going to have Josh Kalou, Andrew Adams. If the Titans can't get pressure on Wentz and he gets comfortable and feels like he has time, Terry McLaurin, Kurt Sam. Now, Curtis Samuel missed the first two days of practice with an illness, but since it's just an illness, I would expect him to play. Even Daimi Brown going up against Caleb Farley or Terrence Mitchell could win that matchup. We know it. Daimi Brown, although he hasn't been a real factor, could absolutely ball out on Caleb Farley or Terrence Mitchell and change the game. So if the Titans' defensive line doesn't dominate, that's given Carson Wentz easy opportunity to take advantage of the Titans' biggest weakness. I don't like that. So the Titans' D-line has to win consistently all day. All day long like they did against the Colts. That's what they have to do. The next matchup I'm looking at on defense is the one I kind of hinted at at the beginning of the show. Christian Fulton against Terry McLaurin. I don't need stats. I don't need analytics. You guys know. Terry McLaurin is a damn good receiver. Despite having pretty miserable quarterback play for most of his career, he's been amazing. He will take advantage of the secondary if Wentz has time. Unless... Christian Fulton can shut him down. And I think it's a good matchup for Fulton with the speed and the movement ability. Christian Fulton has to eliminate, not eliminate totally, but like Devontae Adams. Five catches, 30 yards, something like that. You can't let Terry McLaurin beat you. Force Kurt Sam to beat you out of the slot on a bunch of short passes. That's why I talked about the tackling early in the yards after catch. Force, force them to do that. Force Daimi Brown to beat you like they did with Matt Collins. And it almost worked, but you have to hope it goes better. But you don't let Terry McLaurin beat you, and you hope that Christian Fulton can eliminate that as an option, and you can kind of focus on your other things. That's what the Titans need in this game. They need their D-line to dominate, and for Fulton to make it tough on McLaurin. And if they do that, they are going to win. That's all it comes down to. There's no way that I come here on Sunday night and McLaurin didn't do anything, and the Titans' defensive line played well, and they still lost. I just refuse to believe that that will happen. So those are my matchups to watch on defense. We're going to go into my matchups to watch on offense. I'll also kind of solidify my game and score prediction for you guys. Before we get into that, do want to tell you about our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your football betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, in-depth articles, and analysis on every game you can find. BetOnline continues to be your number one source for all your sports wagering information. They have live betting, up-to-the-minute scores, and updates for every sport, including the MLB, the NBA, the NFL. Heck, they have MMA and boxing and golf and esports. I mean, they have everything you can need. Head to BetOnline.net right now. You can use your computer or your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and all the action, bet online where the game starts. Titans fans, we are going to cap off a game plan Friday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast with my matchups to watch on the offensive side of the ball for the Titans as they take on the Commanders on the road in Week 5. Before we get into it, I want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream for Monday through Friday, free Tennessee Titans content all year long. Moving into my offensive matchups to watch. I talked about Derrick Henry at the beginning of the show. I think he's going to have a huge day. I think this he has a real chance to have a big day here. He's 
going to have to beat Jamin Davis. The linebacker, he's a first-round pick in 2021. Uh, I believe Jamin Davis came out of Kentucky. Uh, I like Jamin Davis quite a bit coming out of college. But Jamin Davis right now has a 79.9 run defense grade and a 74.5 tackle grade. He doesn't miss a lot of tackles, and he plays good run defense. Along with Cole Holcomb, who's played very well as a run defender early on for the commanders at linebacker, Derrick Henry has to run through those tackles. Derrick Henry has to get to the second level, break the tackles of those linebackers, and then get into the secondary where, like I said earlier, the commander's secondary players aren't going to want to tackle Derrick Henry. So if the O-line can give him a little bit of a hole, Derrick Henry has to break some tackles from the linebackers and get into the secondary, and I think he can have a monster, monster day. Like I said, if we come back on Sunday night, I would not be shocked to see Derrick Henry with 200 yards. Like, I think this could be one of his big-time, you know, typical Derrick Henry monster games. 200, two tutties. Like, that's what I think could happen here. It's possible. So, with that in mind, the way that Derrick Henry is going to make that happen, first, the offensive line has to block well, but then Derrick Henry has to do his part and break those tackles from the linebackers What Derrick Henry will do is he reads the linebackers, and if they dart to one direction, he'll counteract and go the other way. He has to not only outsmart those linebackers, but out-physical them as well. With your mind and your body. So, I think big Derrick Henry game, but he has to win the matchup against the linebackers of the commanders. And then finally, I'm probably going to come back to this matchup more often than not, every week. And it's the interior offensive line against the interior defensive line of the Commanders. De'Ron Payne, John Allen, have 24 pressures and five sacks together. Just them two. I think that the Titans are going to go heavy tight end. So the tight ends are going to be able to help the tackles on Montez Sweat, who I'm worried about. So if you have a tackle or a tight end helping one of the tackles with Montez Sweat, one of the other tackles gets to take you know, uh, Smith-Williams or Abata, who should be an easier matchup. And then that interior offensive line has to deal with those two interior defenders, Payne and Allen. Can they do it? Can, not only in pass rush, but in the run game, like we talked about, can the interior trio, when the Titans' run game has looked its best this year, the interior trio of Nate Davis, Ben Jones, and Aaron Brewer have looked good. That's what it's all about in this offense, is that interior trio getting up to the linebackers, executing double teams, moving bodies off the line of scrimmage. The tackles are mostly backside help or just setting the edge. It's those interior guys that really got to do a lot of the work. So can they win that matchup against what maybe is the best position group that the commanders have, their defensive linemen? Can they win that matchup to give Derrick Henry an opportunity to take on those linebackers to give Derrick Henry the opportunity to break those tackles, to give Derrick Henry the opportunity to get into the secondary where those guys aren't going to want to tackle. That's what I'm watching for. Because the reality here is the Titans aren't going to have an explosive passing game in this one. Like I said with the deep passes and my keys to victory, even if you don't hit them, just throw them to open things up. And with the absence of explosive plays in the passing game, it's. Derrick Henry, who has to double down on explosive plays in the run game. And the interior trio of the offensive line has to win against Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen early to give him the ability to do that. So that's what I'm looking for. Those are my game plan points on offense and defense, my matchups to watch on defense and offense, getting you as ready as possible for this game. My prediction will stay the same. I'm going Tennessee Titans 24 Washington Commanders 23. I think we see the same thing from the Titans. They get up early to a Commanders team that's been outscored 59-7 to in the first half this year. And then they let the Commanders come back late with the Titans who have been outscored 64-7 to in the second half. So two teams that have been awful in a particular half. And I think it goes that exact way. The Titans come out and get on them early. The Commanders charge back. 
Titans are able to hold off, get a turnover late, and win the game. That's going to do it for me today, though, folks. Again, I'll be back with you guys on Sunday, right after the game, live on YouTube to break down what I saw out there in a Week 5 postcast. But uh, as always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.